Hey, what's going on? It's Glendon, and I'm here to answer one of the biggest questions that you always seem to have. Yes, you, Lawrence. Today, Lawrence, we're going to chop it up. Okay. Lawrence, let's have that conversation. You are disgusted, tired, sick of doing exactly what you're doing. You want to do something different. You, you want to build a business, but you have that question. What kind of business should I build? What kind of business should I start? All I know is I don't like the space that I'm currently in, but I want to move to a new space. I want to start a business. I want to be free and I want to break from the nine to five. But see, Lawrence, I've got some unpleasant news for you. If you don't know what you want to do, that could be a one to a five year or 10 year process figuring it out. I know that's not what you want to hear, Lawrence. I know, I know, I know. We've talked about this before. You want easy, quick, fast solutions. You want this to happen now. You're like J.G. Wentworth. I want my success now. But the thing is, the clock of life has been ticking for a long time. This is nothing new and you haven't prepared yourself. You haven't asked yourself these questions. You haven't really put in the work of what makes you tick, Lawrence? What makes your boat float? What makes you know you come real hard? What makes you just go, oh yeah, you got to do that. And that's a process. And it's part of the inner game. But so many people are trying to get away from the inner game. I don't want to explore that. I don't want to talk about that. Just give me a system. Give me a process. And let me run and make that money so I can be free. And the problem with that is there are systems. There are processes. And none of them are cheap. The more effective that they are the more money they're going to cost you. So if you're in a position where you're unhappy, you're in a position where things just aren't going well, typically you don't have any money, Lawrence. And I got your email and you, it was like eight paragraphs long and you, you had all of these questions. But the thing is, I have a question for you. Why should I invest in you when you don't invest in yourself? That's the problem. You're not investing in yourself. You're not, you're trying to, you're not even trying to cut corners. You're trying to cut straight across the grid, not even cut the corners like nip, nip. You're just like, I'm going to go through the grid. I'm not trying to work too hard, but this is the thing. When you get on that path of discovery, Lawrence, you find other things. When I got in the storage auction business in the beginning, I liked it, but I didn't like it because I was a little bougie. I was like, I'm running around. I remember I was going through this box, maybe the six unit, and I put my hand in this box, and my hand comes out, and there's like some soil panties on my hands. I didn't have gloves on. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? You used to sell office furniture. You used to ride around, go to fancy showrooms, go to Neocon, open bar. Now you're rooting around in some boxes with some fucking soil panties. What? But I, I had a process, and this is something that may help you, Lawrence. Whenever you want to do something, give yourself 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 30 days. No matter what, I'm going to do this because your inner weakness, as Vince Lombardi so eloquently put, fatigue makes cowards of us all. So the minute that you get mental fatigue, you're out. You're checking out. You're like, ah, this wasn't a good idea. No, nah, I shouldn't be doing this. No, 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 no. So you have to learn how to make yourself commit for short periods of time, 30 days is nothing, 60 days is nothing, 90 days is nothing. If you find yourself committing, then, like I found out after the soiled panty incident, that there was other things. Then I got into it, and like I said, when I first got in the business, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. But I became good, and I started to make money. When I first started doing YouTube, Lawrence, I hated this shit. Hated it. was just like... I gotta go make these damn videos. I mean, it was just like that commercial where the person has a, their, their hand behind their neck and they're just dragging themselves down the street. That's what it was like for me. I didn't like doing this. didn't want to do it because it was intimidating. It felt weird. It was awkward. Then 
I committed. I had a two-year plan. I sat down and wrote up 200 concepts for videos and just started knocking them out. And then if you go back to the earlier videos of 2009, you'll see these black bars on the side of the video because I was using a Sony Cybershot camera because my ass didn't investigate enough where I should get like a 720p camera. And I leave those videos up there as a sign of progress and growth. Because once again, what did I just tell you, Lawrence? I didn't like this stuff. You will grow passionate about things that you become good at. And I'm going to use something that many of you are not going to like. When you first started fucking, chances are you wasn't that good. Probably messed up, felt awkward, maybe didn't want to expose your body, maybe you were self-confident about, you know, your dick size, or maybe you were self-confident about your pussy. There was all these things that maybe, but did you stop fucking? No. <laughs> You're like, we gonna work this out. And if you take the same attitude that you do with fucking, now there's a biological imperative with that, which kind of drives that. So you may not want to, but the biology be like, you, you, you know you want to. But if you really start looking at what can I become good at versus what's out there for me to get in, not work too hard, because that, that's the thing that's killing most of you. And like Lawrence, I'm, I'm telling you, it's just you've got to put forth effort. A really good friend of mine years and years ago told me that if I was serious about my business, I'd be working 24 seven. And I had to sit down and go, damn. That's right. It was true because I wasn't, you know, I was just I was working hard, you know, eight, 12 hours, but I wasn't really elevated. I was doing the regular. The regular is eight to 12 hours. Many of you um, are out there. You are working that already. So if the regular Lawrence isn't getting you what you want, what does that mean? You're going to have to do the extracurricular. Uh, there was this article about people in Africa, their five to nine, which was their hustle, their side business was more important than their nine to five. So essentially they had the nine to five and then they had the five to nine. That's how you have to think. Now, how do you figure out what kind of business that you want to start, Lawrence? Well, first thing you have to do is experimentation. You're just going to have to try a lot of shit. I know it's like not what you wanted to hear. You're looking for some path because how do I know this? I was where you are, Lawrence. Years ago, there was this guy named Charlie Kuntz, and I, he used to be a volunteer in the emergency room. And, you know, I was just at that point was frustrated, didn't like doing what I was doing. And I was like, hey, Charlie, you know, because he was a mortgage broker. And I was like, hey, money. I'm like, how can I be a mortgage broker? And when I really learned about it, it's like I didn't like that shit. And he gave me this book, What Colors Your Parachute? And I went through the exercises and it still didn't get me there because Lawrence, you might have the problem that I have. It's called too much talent and I'm not being facetious. When you have the ability to do a lot of things, it hampers your decision-making ability because you have so many options. It's like, I could do this, I could do this, I can do this. Sometimes I think people who are just naturally gifted in one thing and that's all they can do, because uh, when I was doing the TV show, one of the producers said, this is all I can do. And he's very good at it. He's like, I can't do any other job. So by default, he's become a beast at being a producer. And I really thought about that. So sometimes even today it trips me up because I can do so much. And sometimes it's like, OK, maybe this month this is the only thing that I'm going to do and just leave it at that. But in the process of building and discovering yourself, you have to experiment. You have to try new things. You have to take risk. You have to sometimes risk money. You have to sometimes go to places that you've never been before. Because going back to storage auction business, which I hated in the beginning, the commercial office furniture business, I hated in the beginning. YouTube, I hated in the beginning. Writing, I didn't hate, but the process of writing can be a bitch. Sitting somewhere for hours and hours, pounding on the keyboard, that can be fun, like if you got an idea and it's flowing, but those days where it's not flowing and you need to produce, and it's just like walking through mud, but you just, you know, an inch of progress is nevertheless is an inch of progress. So think about that, Lawrence, because this is what I'm going to do for you, Lawrence, and other people who are like you. 
I'm going to have a special webinar on how to discover what kind of business you should start. I've done this with private clients because just put this out there. Many people, you know, the phone numbers under the uh, all the videos and people call me and like, hey, Glenn, and call me back. Now, that is a rabbit hole of massive proportions. There's no way I'm calling you back because I am walking into a claymore. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know who you are. I don't know what your interests are. I don't know what your talent level is, your skill sets. I mean, I can spend an hour just talking about who you are. And that's what many of you will want. But essentially, respect the business. If you want to talk about you and what you want to do, it's a consult. It's a consult. So for Lawrence and you and anyone else who happens to be listening because we're having this public conversation, I'm going to do this program called What Business Should I Start? And Lawrence, I got your email. I know you don't have any money, but I know you got like 10 bucks. So for $9.99, this Friday, which was going to be ooh, Friday the 13th. Great day. I'm not superstitious. So 3 p.m., join the webinar. And if you can't make it, I'll record it and I'll put it in a place where you can get access to it forever and ever. And we're going to explore this. And I'm going to set it up where you can ask questions and we'll just chop it out because that's the power of a mastermind group. When you sit down and you bounce ideas off someone who's bouncing ideas off you, things that you never thought of come out. And for those of you who want to talk, be open, be candid. I know many of you want the privacy of a consult. And with my consults, you know, some people have signed the NDA. And typically, I'm not giving your business model up to anyone. Matter of fact, I'm not even telling anyone that you're my client. Name one person that I've talked about vaguely that you can say, oh, this is his client. You have no clue. And that's, a, that's just from me being ripped off and me being plagiarized. And I'm not going to do that to anyone else. I've got a client right now who <laughs> kill our business model. Killer. Just, woo, this is nice. Wish I had thought of it. But I stay in my lane. And one reason I stay in my lane is what I do gives me what I want. And I have to be very, very aware of that and moderate that. Because for me, and I'll tell you, my whole deal is freedom. My whole deal is freedom, freedom of choice to wake up, do what I want to do. That's my big deal. So when you start doing other stuff and coming out your lane, sometimes you crash. So you know what I am is a friend said, I'm the catalyst. I get people started. I get people motivated, I get them started, and I point them in the right direction. That's what I do, and I do it very well. So for those of you who want to know what business should I start, we'll be breaking that down 3 p.m. this coming Friday for only $9.99. And uh, for those of you in the Hustler Mindset Project, you're invited, and I'll just put up a separate video in that private space that you know so well for you. Now, reason I'm doing this because this week I've been looking at data and I've been looking at what question do I get all the time? What kind of business do I need to start? How can I get started? How can I sell stuff off of Amazon? And these are not one answer questions or even two answer questions or three answer questions. These are profile questions. Who are you? Where do you come from? Who are your people, Lawrence? What's your skill set, Lawrence? How much money do you have to invest, Lawrence? What's your five-year plan, Lawrence? What's your 10-year plan, Lawrence? What's your 20-year plan? Do you want to get married? Are you married? Do you have kids? Do you want kids? All of this stuff comes into play. But so many people just want to be linear on, if I make this enough money, all of my problems would disappear. They would just disappear and I'll be good. I'll be good, G. I'll be just need to make that money. And no, the fuck you won't. If you're fucking up $30,000 a year right now, you're going to fuck up $300,000 a year because it's a habit. And that's one of the other things that I do. I try to bring my entrepreneurs down to a reasonable level where you're living on a third of your income. So people are on a third. Oh, my God. But see, that, that lack mindset makes you go, oh, my God. But if you got the abundant mindset, okay, so if I want to live on 100 grand, I need to make 300 grand. But if you got the lack mindset, if I want to make 100 grand, Oh my God, if I want to live on, I got to make three. That lack mindset is just a scared little bitch tactic that you play on yourself. 
There's plenty of money out here. There's plenty of opportunity out here. But if you're unproven, if you're unseasoned, Lawrence, uh, I'm just be you know, because based on your email, you're unseasoned. You don't have a lot of experience. So you are not really valuable to the world. You're valuable to your family. You're valuable to your friends. Your mother just loves you. Oh, Lawrence, my baby. Ah, you know, everyone loves you. But as to me or, you know, Carl, a consumer, we're like, fuck you. you know, I don't see any. I mean, yeah, yeah, your mama like you. But what what the fuck you doing for me? And that's just the reality of it. And, you know, and people don't want to say that. But if you can't do shit for the consumer, the consumer has no use for you. None. And that's the problem because you're thinking because in your mind, you know, you're valuable because people in your family have told you you're valuable. So you think that the rest of us out here looking at you, Lawrence, going, you should be valuable, too. And I'm sitting there with Carl, the consumer. And Carl's like, I don't see no fucking value over there. I'm like, me neither. And then when you get value, then the conversation of how to sell stuff, what to sell becomes easier. But as long as you're operating on, quote, potential or assumptions and just hoping and wishing you will be perpetually frustrated. So this Friday for you people who want to be a part. And once again, if you can't make it, I'll record it and I'll put it somewhere where you can get it forever and ever. And uh, we're going to have fun because I'm changing up how I do my classes. If you don't know, if you get on the Hustler Mindset Project email list, it's an audio email list. I mean, it's an audio it's an audio format. Almost like a podcast. I got music and everything. And it's just special content. So be sure to get on that and be sure to sign up for What Kind of Business Should I Start, Glendon? webinar. This Friday, 3 p.m., March 13th. Friday the 13th. Ooh. Ooh. So bad.